So in this video, I want to go through some examples of finding the factors of integers. So in our first example, I'm going to find the factors of 14. Now in the previous video, I showed you a way of determining where you need to stop. And that was by looking at the square root of the number you're considering. Now, 14 is not a square number. So the square root of 14 isn't a nice value at all. I would not expect you to know what that value is. However, we should be able to figure out which two values it is between. So this is all down to whether you know your square numbers or not. So the square numbers either side of 14 are 9 and 16. 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16, which means that this is somewhere between 3 and 4. Okay, so I don't need to go anywhere further than 3 in finding my factors when I lay it out in the way that I showed in the previous video. So 14, first of all, is equal to 1 times 14. And then I increase this by 1 and I get 2. 2 goes into 14 seven times. Okay? Now, 3 does not go into 14. And then I don't need to go any further because the square root of 14 is between 3 and 4. So I don't need to look any further than that. So 14 has four factors. Okay? We have 1, 2, 7, and 14. Okay, reading that way around. Okay. Let's take a look at number 2. Now, 23... The square root of 23, well, which two square numbers is it between? Well, 23 is between 16 and 25, which is 4 squared and 5 squared. So this is between 4 and 5. So I don't need to look any further than 4. So 23 is 1 times 23. Now, 2 won't go into 23 because it's an odd number. 3 into 23? Well, 3 sevens is 21, but 3 eighths is 24. So 3 doesn't go into 23. And 4 won't go into 23 because it's not even. And so the only factors of 23 are 1 and 23. So that means as we will find out very shortly, that means that 23 is a prime number because it has precisely two factors. Okay, so that is 23. All right, how about 50? Now, which two square numbers is 50 between? Well, there's 7 squared, which is 49. And then we've got 8 squared, which is 64. So this is going to be somewhere between 7 and 8. So 50 is 1 times 50. 2 is going to go into 50 because it's even, so 2 times 25. 3 doesn't go into 50, unfortunately. And 4 is not going to go into 50 because uh, 2 goes into 50 25 times. So if we divide 25 by 2, we get 12.5. 4 lots of 12.5 is 50, so that's no good. How about 5? Well, 5 goes into it 10 times. 6 doesn't go into it because 3 didn't go into it. And 7 doesn't go into it because 7 7s are 49, 7 8s are 56, so that's no good. And that's as far as I need to look. So the factors of 50 are 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, and 50. Okay? Right.
OK, so our last example is 200. Now, goodness, what is the square root of 200 between? Oh, well, OK, so this is really going to test the limits of your mental arithmetic now. Um, so 14 squared is 196 and 15 squared is 225. Now, they are not square numbers that I would, I would expect everyone to know, but is useful. So this has got to be somewhere between 14 and 15. OK, so 200 is, of course, 1 times 200. Now, 2 is going to go to 200 100 times, so 2 times 100. Now, 3 isn't going to go into 200, but 4 will. 4 goes in 50 times, because we can divide 100 by 2 cleanly. 5. Now, how many times will 5 go in? Well, 5 is going to go in 40 times. Now, 6 is not going to go into 200 because one of its factors, 3, already failed. If 3 doesn't go into 200, then 6 won't either. And that goes for any multiple of 3 from here on out. So 6 is a no-go. 7, that doesn't go into 200 either. If any of these you want to check, if you're not convinced, you could always do a bit of um, uh, short division. So we could do 200 divided by 7, and we could see. Now, how about 8? Well, 8 does go into it. The reason why I know 8 goes into it is because 2 times 100 went in, and 4 times 50. OK, so we had 2 times 100, 4 times 50. And because I'm doubling that one, I can halve that one. So 8 goes in 25 times. So you can see each time I'm doubling the one on the left and halving the one on the right. Doubling the one on the left, halving the one on the right. OK? So um, I know that if I do uh, double the one on the left, half the one on the right, it's not going to work the next time because 16 times 12.5. OK? So that's going to be, that's going to be out. Now, 9's not going to go in because 3 didn't go in. 10 will definitely go in 20 times. 11 won't go in. Um, that doesn't work. OK, you can, again, you could test that one. 12, well, 12 can't go in because 3 didn't go in. It's in the 3 times table. It's a multiple of 3, so that won't work. 13 won't go in. OK, you can test it if you like. 14 won't go in because 7 didn't go in. Because 14 is 2 times 7, one of its factors failed, so 14 can't go in either. And that is as far as I would need to go. OK, so the factors of 200 are, um, I will write them uh, here. So we have 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, 25, 40, 50, 100, and 200. These are the factors of 200. And remember, you know, as I was going through the list of all those integers, you can always check them and you can use short division on it, okay, and see if there's a remainder. So, for example, I discounted 7, didn't I? So you could do 200 divided by 7. 7's seven into 20 uh, go 2. So that gets me up to 14. That gives me 6 remainder. 7's into 60 go 8. 7 8's to 56. Remainder 4. Now, because the remainder isn't 0, that's telling me that 7 doesn't go into 200. So you could always utilise short division in order to find them if you needed, um, if you wanted to check one and you were unsure.